Wow, welcome and thank you for joining us. I think it's, a, it's always a good way to start connecting with people. And um, so my name is Raul Nino Zambrano and I'm currently the creative director of Sheffield Dog Fest and we are preparing for our 30th edition. So it's a very exciting times for us. And of course, one of our big pillars of the festival is the meat market. So we are still waiting for all your projects uh, to be considered. And well, what better than to ask and answer questions together with my dear colleague, Sophie Duncan. So get ready for our uh, hosting session, but please, Sophie, take the lead. Uh, hi, I'm Sophie Duncan. So I'm the industry program producer uh, at Sheffield. Um, so I oversee kind of currently um, producing the meat market and marketplace activities and year round industry activity as well at the festival. Um, and I'm kind of the go to contact right now for uh, emailing your questions or anything that you have to ask about anything industry at the festival. Uh, currently working my way through many email questions as well, but it's really great to be able to also um, talk some questions and uh, answer some today. So yeah, thank you for coming. Um, so I'll give a little overview of the meat market before we start. Um, so for anyone that's kind of not aware, this year will be our 18th meat market at Sheffield Dock Fest. Um, so we've run it for a long time now. We select around 40 to 50 documentary projects, uh, both films or series that are currently in uh, various stages of uh, production. And then they come to the festival and they meet with various uh, industry representatives from all different backgrounds. So we have distributors, sales agents, funds, festivals, um, broadcasters, streamers. Uh, so yeah, all different um, people from all over the world. The projects are also global. So you can apply from any country. Um, and we have a mixture of all levels of experience in terms of the filmmakers who are making the projects. And we also have um, the general marketplace building where we have other activities going on as well. So we'll have workshops, networking sessions, drinks, um, other pitches happening as well as part of our industry program, as well as industry talks. Um, so there's a, a lot going on. And also our switchboard and consultancies where you can drop in and meet with uh, people from various companies um, to discuss um, kind of anything you want to discuss about documentaries really and any advice that you you would want from them um, and to access all of this um, we just have one type of pass at DocFest so as long as you've got a pass you can enter the marketplace building um, it's only the meat market that is for meat market participants but everything else in the marketplace and the industry you can access uh, and everything in the program as well of course uh, the rest of the program too. Uh, so this year's meat market is going to take place on the 15th and 16th of June, which is a Thursday and a Friday. Um, it used to be Monday, Tuesday, but we have swapped that around for this year. And uh, yeah, so those are the two days when the meetings will happen. They happen from 9am until 6pm. Uh, we do 30 minute meetings as we tried this last year and it's a much better amount of time we found to have a little bit longer and something that we really uh, work on at Sheffield is the quality of the meetings and the curation of the meetings. So it's very personal. Um, every project is curated very specifically for what they're looking for and who they're looking for. So we make sure that the meetings are of high quality and with the people that make sense for the projects to meet with, as well as who the industry representatives want to meet with as well. Um, yeah, I think that's like the main bulk of the of the market. Um, we don't have uh, pitches as part of our market, um, as part of the meat market, should I say, uh, at Sheffield. We um, kind of really focus in on the meetings and really specifying that that curation and uh, personal aspect of things. And it's about the conversations and and everything going on there. Um, so in the meat market before we've had um, kind of a lot of um, like various uh, types of documentaries, various genres of documentaries from all different filmmakers. So films we've had come through before are Shooting the Mafia, which is Kim Longinotto's uh, documentary. We've had All That Breathes by Sean Axen, Searching for Sugar Man, A Night of Knowing Nothing, One Child Nation, Stray, um, Five Broken Cameras, The Act of Killing, 
the story of film. We've had various um, uh, films come through and and uh, come through the meat market. Uh, some of which have then gone on to, you know, screen in the Doctress program or screen at other, like, you know, many international festivals across the world. So it's um, it's a good uh, a bunch to be a part of. And it's always exciting when we get to see um, where people go, uh, whether that be to other markets or festivals or, you know, screening on TV or in cinemas. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of who we've had um, as alumni before. Uh, and then just a reminder that the submission deadline is next Friday, um, so a week tomorrow on the 17th of February at 4 p.m. Uh, if you have any questions, obviously you can ask them in here today, but also you can email me as well beforehand and I am working my way through that inbox right now. So um, please be patient if I don't get back to you um, straight away, but uh, you will definitely get a reply before the deadline, so don't worry about that. Um, also, just a mention that um, our official footage partner of the festival is Getty Images and participants in the meat market will have access um, to their archive um, that they can use for their pitching materials and in their footage. So, yeah. So I think we're ready to answer some questions now, um, which Raul will help me out with. Excellent. Let's start. So this is a dynamic. So we thanks a lot for all the the pre-submitted questions so we kind of merge some of them and kind of group them so bear with us a lot of people send a lot of questions but they are all very very good and i think it will be very good for us to to get in deep so i will be your host for the questions and sophie will be answering them and so let's start um so the first group is about the stages of development so at what stage of development should my project be in to apply? So we're very open to all stages of uh, projects. So we go from concept all the way up until rough cut. And this year we're actually doing a rough cut screening for the rough cuts that are selected. We'll be doing presentations of them as well as meetings. And if you have previously been in the meat market, and selected for the meat market, but now your, your um, film is in rough cut stage, you can apply again for that section, um, which is something new this year that we've brought in. Um, but yeah, so we're open from concept all the way up until rough cut. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Then at, <clears throat> at what stage in your career should you be in to submit to meat market? So you can be at any stage of your career. So we've had first time filmmakers, um, like debut directors, uh, working with new producers as well. So it's not that one of you has to be established or anything. It's just that, yeah, you can be at very, very early level. You can be emerging, having made a couple of things, or you could be very, very established. And every year the slate is always very diverse in that, uh, in the sense of um, experience of the filmmakers involved. Check. Then I have an idea, which is now slowly turning into a treatment, but don't have a teaser budget funder screw. I have thoughts about this at least. Is the mid market for me or is it too soon? I would say if um, the best way to look at this is off your form, or if you want to email me with like some more information on this as to how much info you have. But if you check out the form and what is the required questions, if you're kind of struggling to answer those required questions because you don't have all that information and you can't currently have that information, then I would say it is too early to apply because that is the info that we definitely need. Um, however, if you do have that information, then it is, um, you can apply. I would say you can apply without a teaser, but we really recommend having one because it is uh, much easier for the assessors to uh, see if you know the visual style and various things as a teaser but we also say if you're maybe a concept or early development we understand that people don't have a teaser but if you then submit maybe examples of previous work to show the visual style and then be very very clear in your information that you're submitting what you're going to do with this and what your aim is with the documentary um, then it's still you know it's still possible to get in so I would say if you can answer the required questions and submit some kind of visual material, it can be made up of other film, just be very clear it's not your footage if that's what you're you're submitting. Um, then yeah, you can apply, but just make sure you have those required questions. Great. 
then a bit similar, but with another specification. My film is in development stage. I have access, a teaser, treatment, and an executive producer. I'm seeking still for a producer and a production company. Am I too early for the mid-market? So you do have to have a producer attached. That can be your, we have had people apply who are both the director and the producer, um, but there does need to be a producer of, of some kind, whether that is yourself, but you're looking for co-producers um, or other people to attach. But yeah, it there has to be a producer kind of on board in some way, even if that is a director producer um, role. Um, but yeah, but if you want kind of more, if whoever has submitted this wants more information on this, uh, you can always email with more info and I can help out a bit more specifically with that one. Check. Do you have to already know how your documentary is going to end? You do not, because we understand that you can't always know that. Um, and that's really difficult, um, especially if you're still currently in production or various things can happen. So no, you don't need to know how it's going to end. We do like in the description for you to describe as much as possible the structure of your documentary of what you, you think it will be. And you can be very honest and say like, you know, maybe uh, this kind of thing is changing. If it is something where, you know, you're not sure how it's going to end, that's fine, but maybe make that clear to us just so it's, it's, it's much um, better for us to know that. Check. My film was in production then stopped because of the discovery of a controversy about the main contributor of the film. It is now in development again. Should I choose for development? Uh, yes, I would say if you're now in development again, then you would say that is the development stage. If uh, you're more focused, yeah, I would, I would say that would be classed as development uh, stage for that. Then we move to other questions about uh, application essentials, what we are looking for. One of the questions is, uh, what kind of genres is the meat market looking for? Well, of course, we're looking for documentaries. Uh, so if it's a fiction film, please don't submit. However, <laughs> if it's hybrid with documentary, then we do accept. So we have had hybrid films in before. Um, and we accept all kinds of all, all kinds of genres, sorry. Um, we're very open to that and open to all different styles and, and themes and genres of uh, filmmaking. So yeah, don't be kind of um, put off by, you know, oh, maybe this is too niche or, you know, maybe this kind of thing won't work there because it's something that we're, we're super open about. Then another question is, is the meat market available for documentaries that have been already made, but just require distribution? So if your documentary is finished, then it won't be right for the meat market. However, you can then submit it to our films program, um, which is also currently open for submissions until the 3rd of March. So yeah, if, you're, if your documentary is finished, so past rough cut and fully done now, that is um, more for the festival. And you can still meet with distributors at the festival if you're attending, because they'll definitely be there and you'll be able to see them on the attendee list. So there's definitely opportunities where you will you could um, kind of see distributors, but it's just the meat market isn't the place for a finished film. Then we have, what essential ingredients do you need for a project to be selected for the meat market? In this case, as a first time director. This is a good one. Um, so, <laughs> I would say it's again like what is I really recommend looking at the form and kind of um, uh, reading that up and reading our FAQs and things and then if there's um, any really uh, things that you're struggling with just get in touch with me or like I know a lot of people here today have already started filling in the form and are asking questions now to clarify which is really great um, but I would say again everything that is essential that we've put as mandatory in that form is you know the basics of essential but in terms of I suppose um, what we look for when it's going to be selected as well I mean as a first-time director um, I would recommend also just asking more questions so if you're not sure on something in the form definitely just ask we don't want it to be you know too difficult and understand that if you've done these things before it's much easier to fill in if you're used to these things and if it's new to you it can be a bit more difficult um, and a bit confusing at times so if you find that then just 
get in touch with us and we will we're very very happy to help and clear things up and we always aim, aim to make it easier each year to apply and definitely easier in terms of how we structure it um and i would also say that so for essential ingredients um the biggest thing is clarity be very clear in what you're saying so um we ask for a log line a short synopsis and a a long description for example and in the description please be as clear as possible with what you are what is happening in your film like you don't need to leave that on a cliffhanger or leave anything open like we want to know what's happening if that's not being used to sell the film that's just for the assessors to you know know what's going to happen in your film or know where you're trying to take that either if that's stylistically or if that is thematically that is super helpful for us to know in terms of um, what it's going to be and what you're looking for and who you're looking to meet with, that is much better for us. So I think clarity is super important um, for for um, the meat market, and I think that is I think that's really the most important thing. It's just being very clear with your intentions, clear with what you're looking for, and clear about what your film is um, as much as you can be. So yeah. Then we have a question. <clears throat> Can you please specify what is expected in the project short synopsis? Yes, so uh, I know that it can sound quite similar when we ask for a log line, short synopsis and long synopsis. So I think I've explained the long one uh, in the question earlier. So that's much more, you know, big description. It's not trying to sell the film or anything. It's just trying to say, this is what it is. The uh, log line is just a one liner. So, you know, what you potentially, excuse me, it reads, um, yeah, that's just to give like a quick inkling as to what your film is. The short synopsis, a little bit more info. It's kind of probably what you'd see more when you see, you know, films in programs and you see their short, a short synopsis of that written down. So it is, you know, we don't want everything in it, um, but a little bit more info than, you know, the log line, but you're just trying to kind of say the main, um, the main things you want to convey about the film that, might want people to watch it or want people to, you know, read more about it. So that's why I would say for the short synopsis, there's not that many words in it. So it is a bit of a, yeah, one to write. Good. Another question. There are many unknowns with regards to my project's budget and time scale. How much essential information is needed to apply? So we do need to, we do say with time scale, we always say estimated, um, like time of um, uh, finishing the film, I've forgotten the word, but estimated completion date, that's it. Uh, we always ask for estimated. So we understand that things can change. Um, you can also write kind of like summer 2024, if you're not sure of like, like for example, if that's when your film is gonna finish, if you're not sure of the month, we don't need to know the exact date, but it is helpful. Um, we kind of do need to know the, uh, a kind of time scale for it. Uh, however, again, in other sections, if you um, were kind of aware that this could really change, I would recommend writing that down in a, in a different section of the application, potentially in the looking for section, you could put a note and then we can kind of make a note of that when, um, when uh, assessing the projects. So it's always good to kind of make this known so you can submit with it, but then if you're really unsure about something, just put a note in somewhere on the application about that or even follow up with me in an email. Um, so if you want to submit and then just email me with your name and the project's name, and then just say, I just wanna flag this information and then I can make sure that everyone is aware of that. Um, so same with budget. Again, we understand budgets can change, but it's also important that we do know the budget right now and that the finance that you have is, you know, that's like your confirmed finance and then you've what you're looking for now but I know these things can change and and things so just keep us updated and we can update it for you excellent now we move to another group of questions that we call kind of application questions changing the application deadlines etc mm -hmm. one of the question is when will applicants hear if a project has been accepted to the mid market so we will contact the um, all projects in early April. Um, so I won't give you an exact date, but it is early April that that will be um, after all our rounds of assessing have 
uh, happened. So yeah, we will contact uh, everybody in early April, regardless of the outcome, everybody will get a uh, response to let you know what the outcome was of your application. Can any changes be made to the application after the 17th of February? If there have been moves forward on the project, for example, if a producer has been found, if contributors have been identified, if some funding has been obtained, if any filming has been done and is available to watch? Yes, so changes can be made after 17th of February. However, we really recommend getting as much correct information in as possible. Um, so maybe, you know, don't submit if you're expecting everything to change because it is, um, we can then go in and make those changes and we're happy to make those changes. However, um, you know, it is, we will have to go and manually do that and assessment will start very soon after the deadlines of the deadline um, has gone. So potentially your project is start, could be being assessed in, you know, a few days after the deadline. So if you have got any changes, let me know as soon as possible by email. And I will definitely update that. And we'll always let the assessors know as well if there are any updates, so that they're very aware of that. Um, but we cannot guarantee if it's quite late after the 17th that that change will have then been reflected and seen because we obviously will start our assessment period quite soon. But yeah, if there are any changes, let me know and I will uh, always get that in as quick as possible. So. And am I correct, uh, Sophie, that actually nobody can uh, get into the form again? So they will really need to email you, right? Yes. So you can't change the form just because of the system that we use and also, you know, ease of us having it definite right there and uneditable during the assessment process. But yeah, so you have to email me with it, but then I will definitely change that uh, for you. That's right. Another question. Are you asking about a website for my company or for the film? Either one that you would like. So that is completely up to you. You don't have to have a website. Um, it's just some extra information. So if you have a website for the film, feel free to put that. If you would rather put the website of your company, feel free to put that as completely up to you, really. Then I don't have a production end date nor a date release. Shall I put approximate dates? Yes, put approximate, as close as possible to what you have. Again, if you want to kind of, if it's quite important to you to flag, that that is not the, um, you know, you're, you're quite unsure of those dates, just let me know. But yeah, approximate is, is fine. What should an applicant write on the application if something is as yet undecided or unknown? For example, the length of the final version of the film, the team members, access to the subjects, funding or backing or any kind or location of filming? I would say if, kind of all of that is unknown. I think you'll struggle writing the application up for that, just as a just a thing to flag. If, if, if all of that information is very unknown, I think that is quite difficult then to pin down what is happening and what uh, where that kind of, where the project is going. So I would then recommend that maybe you apply next year for that when things are more confirmed uh, in that way. If it's a couple of things, that's fine. And especially with team members, we understand that you might not have all the team in play, especially depending on what stage you're in. And that's absolutely fine. We've had people apply before still looking for co-producers or who are looking for various team and maybe looking for an editor. So that's absolutely fine. But yeah, if, if kind of everything is very unknown, that's then very difficult for us to assess what you're looking for and what you need. And um, I would then recommend kind of working more to confirm a lot of these things before applying. Uh, but yeah, if it's a couple of things, that is uh, fine. And if you're really unsure on that, just email me to ask and we can talk about that more specifically in terms of the specific projects, which might be a bit more helpful because again, it can really um, change project to project on that. So yeah. Good. Now kind of a golden question. What makes for a successful application? That's the, the big question, um, but I would say, again, clarity, like really, I know I've said it, but uh, it really is important to be very clear. Um, and it's fine if you're writing it in the style of how you write. It's not, we're not judging on the way it's written in terms of, you know, we don't have one format style that we expect it to be written. Um, it's just that it's clear to what you are doing. So that is 
fine as long as it's that. I would also say footage or visuals that really shows a good clip or a, you know, a good teaser of what you are making. Again, I can't give one example of the best clip because some people submit a trailer full of edited clips. Some people submit an, a, a section of the film, but then you could be an early concept stage, uh, early development stage, sorry, and submit, you know, other footage, but at least we've got an idea of the visuals and the kind of um, style that the film will be in. I would say be very, uh, be just being very sure of what you are doing and, you know, don't um, kind of try and, make it fit anything because it's not we're not looking for specific things we're very very open um so don't try and tailor it to what you think we are looking for because that's not really um you know we're looking for what you are making we're not looking for a specific thing we are everything is assessed separately and as it is on its own it's not ever you know we're not comparing with anything so i think that's um kind of an important thing also to kind of think about what you're doing and just really go for what you're talking about and what your film is and being very confident with that um, is really good. So yeah, I suppose clarity and all of those things, if that uh, helps really, yeah. Very good, very good. And then the last one in this group, is there a particular aspect that you are looking for in selecting projects each year, perhaps a theme? Uh, so I probably kind of answered that as well, but um, not really. We don't have, well, no, there isn't. We don't have a theme that we look for. Um, you know, none of the projects are ever, um, they, it's not kind of like a strand of, of films that you might have in a program or something. None of them have to connect in any way. It's uh, very much based off, is this project, you know, um, the, the individual project's merits. Um, it's not created. Uh, as a group specifically, like that slate is made up of the individuals. So I would say there's not a particular aspect we are looking for or theme. Every year we get very, very different uh, films in there. Every year, very different themes. Um, so yeah, just any, any theme. Great, great. Let's move now to another group that is more about the materials. Um, what makes for the strongest visual materials in a submission? I think, um, again, this is, um, it depends very much on your project. If you are really explaining in the, the writing of your project that it's, you know, about the style of the film and it's about the vision, you know, if a main aspect of your film is how it looks visually, then we need, to, we want to see that in the footage. Because if you're just explaining that, but then the footage doesn't show that, then that's not, you know, um, that doesn't really uh, match up with it. And makes sense so if you're you know if it's really about the style really show the style maybe if your project is very much based on the character show that character in the in the visuals and show us you know a really great clip of that character if that's the case i would say definitely go off what the main um um kind of focus you want to make of your film and what your just make sure your written aspects match up with your your visual as well because it just that makes a lot of sense if you're really talking about one character all the time and then we don't see that character in the footage that can be quite difficult to then think about you know what um what we're gonna see when we see that film so i think definitely just basing it off your project and i realize i'm saying that quite a lot but i really do think that that is important there's not one way to make great visual materials again a teaser might be best a trailer might be best but also a three minute clip might be best so um yeah and i just this i don't think this is going to come up but if this does come up um i put we say three minutes if it is over just over under three minutes that's fine if it's really a lot longer you can still submit it but however we might only watch the first three minutes just out of fairness. So if you only have a longer clip, I've been asked this before, this is why I'm just throwing it in. Um, you, uh, kind of, we will watch the first three minutes. You, people, like some assessors might watch more, but you can't guarantee that more will be watched of that. So that's just something to flag. Clear, clear. Are there any resources available to view examples of pitch documents from past documentary film projects? So we don't have this um, just because it is kind of sensitive and specific info to the project. So um, we don't want to breach their, um, you know, uh, their projects uh, 
uh, their privacy on that. So we don't have examples of that, but if you have any questions about, you know, kind of, if you're not sure on, um, if you're not used to making these kind of applications, then again, just get in contact with us and we can, we can help. Check. I'm aware that pictures from Getty images can be used as representation of images that might be in the field, but can material from other sources be used? Um, we, you can use uh, material from other sources, but just make sure that you are crediting them within your trailer uh, or clip and just make it very clear that that is not kind of your footage that you are using, if that's the case. Check. For the section of the application treatment or additional project information, are there any guidelines on what types of documents can be submitted? For example, are pitch decks or project proposal of any length acceptable? Also, how many documents can be submitted? So we do leave this quite open um, because I know that people might already have treatments or pitch decks that they really wanna submit and they've worked very hard on. Um, so in the past, we've had various things submitted we've had um yeah uh, very long treatments quite short treatments we've had pitch decks we've had letters of support if that's something that you you know also like to submit if if someone's kind of supporting your your film and you want to show share that with us i'd say there's not a limit on the documents you're submitting but i would be aware to not submit too many um because I think if you start submitting everything and everything, like the main things we ask for in the application are there for a reason, and that is the main things that will be being looked at. So it's not like we're missing too much. This is just to kind of support the application. But I would say pick quite specifically what you want to show. So if you have worked really hard on a pitch deck, please put that in. Please put a treatment in, but maybe don't submit more than two or three um extra things especially if they're quite long i would say maybe if it's quite a long one maybe just do one or two but um yeah i hope that answers that clear clear if no filming has been done for the project can an earlier film by the author be submitted as proof of the quality of the author's work and this very specifically in my case a 25 minutes film i have completed about a similar theme can this be submitted so yes, it can, um, but just make it very clear that the footage that you are submitting is not for that film that you are currently making, and that is from your previous film. Um, so you can submit that as like proof of um, kind of previous style or, you know, proof of um, kind of access you've had before, the way you film things or anything like that. So you can use it, but yeah, it's um, just make it very clear to us that that is not from the film that you are submitting as. Another important question, by what date must the final version of the footage to be accompanied to the project? For example, a link to the visual materials can be included in the 17th of February application, but the film materials may not have been totally finalized by this date. By which date would the footage need to be ready for? So we really do, I would say the footage does need to be there by the 17th, like really preferably. Um, if it's you really cannot get any footage by that date, email me and we can I can kind of figure out the best. Um, I can do my best to kind of, you know, uh, make sure that the newer footage is in there. But I would say we can't really give longer than like another week or so because of our assessment times. It's, you know, quite a uh tight period of assessment and uh it's important that everyone has a similar amount of time and we're not being unfair on other applicants as well so but we are also happy to help out if there's you know various reasons as to why something might be updated or anything again just email me and we'll see the best that we can do um with the time will that be possible sophie also to update if it's a vimeo link for example that they just upload a new version Yes, but you'd have to email me the version and everyone, please make sure that their passwords are um, stay the same uh, or else we will be chasing you to get the correct password. Um, but yeah, please make sure it's either a private link or, or if you are happy with, you know, however you want to share it, just make sure that it is, um, uh, you know, viewable to to anyone who will be viewing it. Great. 
Let's move now to another group of questions that we call it now teams who can apply. So one person asked, can I enter a project to the mid market as a producer director without yet having a full team in place? So yes, you can apply without, without having a full team in place, sorry. Um, that's fine. We understand that you can't always have your full team in place or things might change. Um, but yeah, the most important thing is uh, producer and uh, director, of course. Check. Can you apply as an independent filmmaker? And do you need to be attached to a production company? You can apply as an independent filmmaker, that's fine. Again, you will need a producer or yourself as producer though, that's the only uh, caveat on that. So yeah, as long as those two roles are filled, it is um, okay to apply. Are projects with two directors working as a duo accepted? Yes, I believe we've had one before with three. So multiple directors are indeed accepted. That is absolutely fine. All good. And you can add them on the form as well. There are, and once you've filled in one director, you can then fill in another one if that is the case and that should come up for you. What about Sophie, if it's a collective? Ooh, good question. You can apply, but in terms of filling out the form, if you are applying as a collective, email me and we will uh, work out the best way to, to list that for you. It will be just a matter to fill the right field. Yes. Yeah, to fill in the right field. In the, yeah. But of course, they are welcome. Yeah. Can we apply when we are still looking for co producers? You can, yes. We have a lot of people uh, still applying when looking for co producers. And we've actually had people find co producers uh, at DocFest while they've been here at the meat market. So that's always good as well. So yeah, you can definitely apply while still looking for co-producers. Excellent. Now we have questions around applying with previously submitted projects. So last year I made a three minute trailer and applied but failed. This year on the same project, I have a rough cut of 24 minutes. Can I still apply for the mid market? Is there any other category that will be more appropriate for me? Um, so yes, I would, uh, you can uh, apply again so um, if you've ever just more generally if you have applied before with a project and it's not been successful you can reapply many of our projects that do get through to our slate each year have been unsuccessful on a previous application and that might just be that you know it wasn't ready yet in you know the opinion of the assessors like maybe um, you know it was felt that that wasn't the right time for it to be at the market or it can be various, various reasons. And then maybe the next year it's completely, maybe something's completely changed or maybe there's been a lot of developments because like year on year things can massively change. Maybe it was just too early of a stage, you know, even two years later, something can be much more um, fleshed out and then has gotten into the market. So if you've applied before, definitely don't be put off applying again. A lot of the time, the reason I think, you know, it's very easy to feel like if you're unsuccessful, or something that it's just that people don't like it and that's it but do not feel like that so often it's just that maybe this is not the right time maybe it's not ready there can be a whole host of reasons and we have so many occasions where people resubmit and the next year they're successful or two years later they're successful because it can just be various reasons um and in this case you can apply again of course it's the same kind of uh uh, remit of that as well so yeah you can apply and if it's the rough cut stage you can then apply to our rough cut um specific uh section which is within the meat market it's just that we'll be doing the presentations as well so it's the same process um it's just slightly different at the festival but in terms of the application process it is the same um yeah and also i think i mentioned earlier but just to flag again if you were successful before um, we don't accept applications again just to go if you're in like usually it was if you've been successful before you can't then get in selected to the meat market again however if you're now in rough cut stage you can um so if you're in development and now in production and you were successful in last year you can't apply again until you're in rough cut stage but we do now accept if you're in rough cut it's different you'll meet with different people and it's kind of you know um because of the presentations it is um slightly different now so that is uh kind of a new uh thing that's also in our faqs as well to be more clear on that 
Now, in terms of applying with multiple projects, uh, I'm presenting two films. So I wait to have submitted the first application before starting the second one? No, you can submit them um, whenever. Yeah, if you want to do them at the same time, I suppose that's just up to how you want to submit them, really. Um, so, yes, yeah, submit. You can submit more than one and kind of, yeah, just submit them whenever it's best. If you want to do one than the other or both at the exact same time, then that's up to you. And can one production company apply with more than one project? You can. You can apply with more than one project. Um, we would just recommend that for um, if you are applying with, say you were accepted, um, there has to be kind of a representative for each project. So we wouldn't have like two projects with the exact same director producers because that would be um, really not the best for either of those projects to do well at the market in terms of who you're meeting. So in terms of time, we really want to have the two, um, you know, the two days as free as possible for you to meet with as many people and many good connections as possible for your projects. So it, in terms of, you know, it's in terms of teams really, rather than the specific production company, as long as there's people there to go for you and to, you know, be representing that project, then it's fine. Excellent. We move to a new group and maybe good to mention at this moment as well that we are we are receiving more questions through the chat and that's something that Eleni will take over when we finish with the pre-submitting one. So please, if you are still thinking that we are not covering something, please put it in the chat that that will be also covered at the end. Let's move now. Questions are around the waivers. Is there any fee discount for the presentation of multiple projects? We do not have a fee discount in terms of multiple projects. Um, in is this in terms of the application? If this is in terms of application, it's every application is a separate one. Um, we have discounts and waivers available for specific um, countries, which you can find the list of on our website. Um, but also just get in touch with me if you have any questions about waivers or discounts and I can uh, help out with that. Um, but yeah, in terms of multiple projects, we don't have a discount um, for entering multiple projects. Check. Another question that was very specific, someone from Singapore with a Filipino producer, um, and they were wondering if they were, that they could request a fee waiver as they have no access to the Singapore Film Commission in this specific state, for example. So if you get in touch with me, we can, yeah, I would say email me about that one. I'd say with any specific waiver requests, if there's any specific circumstances, it's always best to email in this case. Uh, and we can, yeah, see what um, is available. Good. We move now to questions around funding. Mm -hmm. Would we be disqualified if we have self-funded the project thus far? and have not received any financial contributions? Um, you would not be disqualified um, for that. Uh, we, I mean, I think, I suppose with financial contributions, it's always um, good to know who's behind it, if, you know, who's backing it, if so, like financially backing it, I mean. Um, but no, we've had projects come in that are, you know, partially self-funded. We've had projects come in with basically no funding currently in place. So it is all very much, um, you would not be disqualified for that, no. Check. Do you prefer projects that already have some form of funding behind them? Um, I wouldn't say it's preferred, but um, I mean, it, it helps to some extent if there's some funding behind it, but it's not going to, um, it's not like the main thing that we're looking at with the project. If it's like an amazing project and we see a lot of people would be really interested in this and there's a lot of potential there, um, but you don't have much funding at all behind that, that's still, you know, potential to get in. And that is what the meat market is for as well, right? Like to get the funding and meet with people who could, who could give that funding. Um, so no, you don't have to have um, some kind of funding already behind it. How certain does the budget estimate have to be at the time of the submission? What if research between February and June renders the estimate inaccurate, for example? I would say just be as um, 
accurate as you can at the time of submitting. And then if that changes, just let us know as soon as. Um, again, I understand that things can change and we've had people before email with a budget change for, like you say, various reasons, things might happen, anything, yeah, could come up. So as long as it's accurate at the time of, and if you already see something coming up where you're like, this might really change, then just um, get in touch um, with us and, and let us know that that could change and then we're kind of aware of that. Check. I do not have a budget and financing in place. Does I want to present my project to others? If financing in place is mandatory, where should I turn to present my project at DotFest? Um, so it's not mandatory, you can still apply. However, this is a good time to also mention other things probably at the marketplace that are really useful. So uh, even if you're not in the meat market or unsuccessful or not applying to the meat, maybe you realize it's not, you know, this year it's not your time to apply or something. Um, if you have a pass for the festival, uh, you can get into all the marketplace events. And I would say that we have um, a lot of, uh, events where you can meet a lot of people so last year for example I mean, we're yet to announce you know the program of the marketplace and industry events this year however last year for example and in, in previous years we have things like a, a who's who so kind of distributors and sales agents introducing themselves and then you can kind of go and talk to them after kind of see who's in the room and be like okay these are people I'd like to kind of meet with and talk to um, we'll have various networking open networking sessions where you could meet with anyone in the industry because everybody's all got the same pass and the same um you know uh kind of permissions i suppose to go into everywhere with that same pass you can meet anyone anywhere there's also the cafe at the marketplace which is a really good place for kind of um meetings that you want to set up yourself or if you see someone you'd like to you know say hi to um that's always good we'll have our attendee list as well and if you have a pass um so anyone can see the attendee list but if you've registered for a pass you'll also be able to see contact details if that person has said they'd like to share that so if people have said they'll share their email I really really recommend for not just our festival but any festival emailing that person beforehand and saying like hey I've got this I'm around at the festival can we meet and you know you can meet them there because that's that's often how a lot of things happen so there's definitely a lot of spaces you can go to at the festival where you can meet with various people um, not just at the marketplace, but of course, that is, I suppose, the kind of uh, main function of the marketplace is meetings and interactions and, you know, speaking about your projects to people. So there's definitely other ways that you can get talking to people that aren't, the meet, you know, that aren't in the meat market room as well. Check. A couple of questions about accessibility. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about supporting writers and filmmakers with severe dyslexia? We definitely do support um, writers and filmmakers with dyslexia or any access issue, uh, access needs, sorry. If you have any access needs, um, please email us and we will help out the best we can. Um, and make sure, you know, if you let us know your specific circumstance, we will see what we can do and help out um, in the best way that we are able to. Um, so don't be put off, just get in touch with us and we will uh, be very open to helping out. And building maybe on, on the previous question as well, um, I'm dyslexic and can become nervous when pitching to, to other people, maybe sound unclear. Will this affect a commissioner's decision? And if so, is there any way to make the commissioner aware before you pitch? Um, I don't believe that would ever affect someone's decision um, at all. And you can definitely, um, we can definitely, if uh, you wanted to make uh, people aware of something before you pitch we can definitely put that in place um, there's other example it's a different example but for example if a project is very sensitive and there's um, things that really need to be kept very um, you know uh, secret for various reasons of safety or any reasons we make people aware of that before they'll meet with you um, and in terms of like um, I know this says pitching and I don't, I'm unsure if this question means pitching in terms of the sense of a pitch or in terms of meetings itself, but we don't have um, pitching and we try and make the one-to-one -one meetings as comfortable as possible. Um, but obviously it's still very easy to become nervous in these, in these instances, um, but we'll try our best to make it, you know, a very comfortable space and a very open space. Um, and if there's anything you want us to make someone aware of before you meet with them, just let us know and we can, uh, we will help, again, we'll help out as best we can with that. 
Right. And we come to the last group of the questions that are more about things around, around the festival, around the meetings themselves. Does everyone pitch at the meat market or is it more organized meetings? Uh, it's definitely organized meetings. So yeah, there's no pitches. Um, there's two days, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, but yeah, two days from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. of organized meetings. You do not have nine till six fully meetings, do not worry. Um, we very much make sure there are regular breaks and lunch um, uh, slots involved in that so that you're not you know, going for too long um, without a break. Um, so we make sure it's curated in terms of the people you're meeting, but also the, the timings that you have as well, because it's a very, you know, it's a lot of talking and it is, it is quite tiring after a while and very busy. So we want to make sure it's still quite a pleasant experience and not, you know, overwhelming and you're not really tired by the end of the second day. We want it to still feel, uh, fresh after that time. Um, so, but yeah, it's very organized, uh, meetings and we will, uh, organize those for everybody. Um, we ask people to select, I don't think this as, no, this isn't coming, coming to question, I don't believe. So I will just go through a little bit, um, in terms of the actual process, if you are a selected project, you can select what industry representatives attending you would like to meet with. They will select what projects they'd like to meet with. We then match you up mutually off mutual requests, but then we also take into account who you want to meet and who um, industry representatives want to meet. And then we will curate that based off what you're looking for. Um, you know, the team uh, here on the industry team are very experienced in markets or various aspects of documentary um, festivals and production. So we're kind of really looking at each project specifically and thinking, okay, you know, these are the kind of people that would be really good for them to meet or, um, or maybe this is the kind of project that this company might want to meet, but, you know, so we'll really, really um, make sure that the meetings are very organized and you'll always see your a draft schedule before your final one. So if there's someone you would not want to meet with for various reasons, you can just say, actually, I'd rather not meet with them. And that's absolutely fine. We'll just take them off. So, it's very kind of uh, made for you. Um, and yeah, we're making making sure it's not just a crazy long day um, for everybody on both days. Excellent. Will there be an opportunity beforehand to contact industry representatives who will be at the market? There is. So uh, again, if you have a part, so if you're, um, this is for both selected projects or anyone who has got a festival pass. Um, if you have a pass for the festival, then closer to the festival, you'll be able to see the attendee list and you'll be able to filter that by, you know, kind of companies or um, the kind of roles people have. Um, and then you'll see if, if someone has shared their contact details, you'll be able to see those contact details and contact them prior to the festival. Is it okay that I attend as an observer only without a project to pitch? So we don't have observers at the meat market um, very much since it is only meetings. Um, I understand that, you know, where there are some pitches, um, there would be observers, but this, it's not really relevant that we would have observers here. So there aren't, however, there are other sessions that you can attend at the market that you don't have to have a project to be involved in. You can just go and watch. Um, and just attend those. We also have pitches happening at the festival, um, not as part of the market, but as you know, other pitches. So you can definitely attend those as an observer as well. Um, so there are some pitches going on, but just not as part of the meat market. How much time can a selected attendee spend at the meat market? Can they attend for the entire duration or just a specific time slot? Um, so we would say that if you are selected we ask you to keep the two full meat market days free um this is much easier for us when creating your schedule if the more flexible and the more availability you have um it's much easier than to get meetings with other people based off their um uh availabilities as well so as open as you can be is the best it can be so we really do ask that you have those two days free um, obviously, then when you have your schedule, you can um, kind of plan in a meeting with someone else um, or, you know, 
uh, if you finish early, you can go check out some of the film program or the alternate realities program or whatever you want, uh, or hang around the marketplace for other events going on there. So yeah, I really that really would say um, we would there's not an allotted time slot. It's very much like these are the two meat market days. Please keep those free. We will schedule your meetings, and then other than those meetings, you can do anything you want at the festival, pretty much. So yeah. Right. And now the final pre-submitted question is, can a successful applicant only meet people who express an interest in the project after having viewed the application or can they speak to anyone at the meat market? Um, so you can, so we do, um, so as I said, we do base those schedules off mutual requests and then take into account um, what everybody is interested in and um, what everybody else is interested in, sorry, and also based off what you are looking for. Um, but you can, I mean, you can speak to anyone at the meat market. We're not going to bar anyone off from speaking to anybody. It's just that our meetings that we plan in um, will be based off interest mainly or uh, how applicable it is for you to meet. However, all these people will be attending the market. So if there's someone who, you know, you haven't got a meeting with, you can definitely email them, get in touch with them, or, you know, if they're around the meat market, just say hi and see if they, you know, want to chat uh, anyway. Um, again, there's a lot of spaces to have um, these discussions within the building, not just in the cafe, but there's a lot of seating everywhere um, where you can definitely uh, see them. And as well as at the rest of the festival, to be fair, it's got um, all our venues are within uh, quite a smallish radius where it's you know each venue is not too far from the other one um so you'll definitely probably bump into many people uh throughout the festival if you're attending uh, at various places so i think you can definitely you can definitely speak to anyone there's no you know barring of that it's just that the specific schedules will be more curated um in that sense excellent now we move to eleni who will lead us through the questions Hello. in the chat Thank you everyone for asking questions throughout. We've had some good questions come through. Um, so I'll just read through a couple and we'll see where we get to before the end of the session. So um, we've had a question around um, how many applications do we expect to be submitted to the meat market overall before we select the final selection of 40 to 50 projects? Um, we have around like 400 or so um, last year. It really does range year to year, but yeah, I'd say there's about 400 or so. And then we select around 40 to 50 projects out of those. Thank you. Um, you've kind of touched on this, Sophie, around um, other pitching events at the festival, but someone has asked um, if there are any other opportunities like meeting the commissioners, for example. Um, there's definitely spots to meet them. So like the who's who, for example, um, or the that's like an example of a time when you could definitely meet with um, potentially commissioners. We've had a panel before in our talks. Again, we haven't got our program for this year, so can't be specific about what exactly what will happen this year. But last year, for example, we've had a panel that's very much meet the commissioners, see what they're doing, listen to them talk about what they're doing. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, places where you can go and see what they're doing. We often have as well uh, in the switchboard and consultancies room, um, there'll be various companies or individuals there who work in the industry where you can ask them about what they're doing or meet with them. Also with the switchboard, they're really great people to ask advice on kind of who to meet with or kind of go through the attendee list and say, hey, is anyone from or if you're, you know, it is a big attendee list. So if you want to say like, hey, do you know if anyone from this place is there, then definitely they can help you out with that or we can help you out with that. Um, yeah, so there's definitely all different places that you can meet uh, meet these people at and even just drinks events as well. It doesn't have to be such a setup. You know, there's a lot of, we have a lot of networking drinks uh, at Sheffield. So um, at these kind of events, you can also meet with people and, you know, um, I definitely recommend uh, kind of seeking that out um, 
beforehand and checking out the program before you come and kind of figuring out what the best things that you want to go to are again any questions about any parts of the program just ask and either myself or a relevant team member from another team can will definitely be like super happy to to help advise on that thank you um another question we've had is could two people attend for one project so where there are two directors for example Yes, so we um, usually we recommend two people attending the the market. Um, normally, it would be a director and a producer, but um, you know, if you've got two directors, you can attend. And in terms of capacities, we will discuss that like with selected projects. If people want three there, like two directors and a producer, then it's something we can definitely like figure out and um, and sort out for you. So yeah, we always recommend two people. Uh, usually, um, we have had people um, just one person representing a project for whatever reasons. Maybe it's just you know to do with not being um, able to be here for some reason. But yeah, we recommend two anyway. Um, and this question is around sort of attending or barriers to attending the festival. So um, someone has asked: Our resources for in-person industry events is limited, and the fees and tri trip costs in the UK are very high for us. Is there an option to attend the market online or for only one person, so either the director or producer to attend in person so that we don't have to pay for two people to attend? Or alternatively, how would you advise a team in this situation to maximise the opportunities at the market to justify expenses? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, and, um, you know, we want to be able to do more, especially in the future with with uh, making it as accessible as possible and we try our best to make it as accessible as possible i'll answer the last bit first as well in terms of making the most of time uh, of your time at the market um i'd really say like if you can only attend for a few days uh definitely pick the marketplace days out of those days that you're going to attend so for this year that would be the wednesday thursday friday i would say that uh, if, if what you're looking for, you know, is specifically the funding for your project and really making the most out of that, then those are the most important days for you at the festival. Um, not that they're obviously every other program is very important, <laughs> but yeah, if you're looking for things like funding, that's when the people in the industry are going to be there, like definitely on those days. So I'd really, really make the most out of going to those sessions. We also have sign up sessions at the marketplace, which are more practical and kind of workshop based and skills based or networking based and we really I really do recommend going to them a lot of people meet future collaborators in those sessions and um or have met you know made various connections even if not for that project for a future project in those kinds of sessions so I really really recommend uh, making the most of those times and again even just getting to in touch um so if you are coming if you uh, want to get in touch with the team and ask like hey I'm doing this or I'm looking for this what do you recommend I attend at the festival we can definitely help out with that and and kind of point you to what's going to be happening especially once the program is um, and the schedule is announced we can really um, point you to things that are the kind of most um, useful for you to go to if you want some help with that um, as I say, we can accept like one person coming for a project. We recommend to, but we understand that you might only be able to have one person come um, for that project. I think it's also worth looking into potential if you're UK based um, or, or kind of based any, of course, this applies globally as well. But if you're UK based, if you look into certain organizations that could also potentially help with um, uh, there's sometimes some help for people who are freelance in production uh, to attend festivals like this, like certain bursaries and things. Again, if um, there's a few I can kind of link people to. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. They're not kind of, a, you know, through us or anything, but there's definitely companies and places that can that can help with things like that. But yeah, any questions or like concerns about this, let me know. In terms of online as well, we, we did... Um, we've done hybrid and online obviously in the last few years we we had to go online um, and we've done online before um, our main focus is this year is kind of in person especially due to capacity of um, organizing these festivals um, uh, it is uh, kind of like a big kind of a two festival thing if you're doing the online but we are still open to um, if things really cannot happen in person some online things being had um, but again email me and we can um, 
kind of figure that out and talk that through. So very open to talking about um, these things. I hope that helped. Thank you. Um, I've got a question here that's sort of around sensitivities of projects. So <laughs> if the project has a sensitive subject matter that could make the filmmaker vulnerable to pressure, um, from vulnerable to pressure from a bad actor cooperation during filming, if word gets out too soon, how can we protect the filmmaker? So this is in reference to the festival, maybe publishing content about the project online and how, what measures can we put in place to protect sensitive projects? So we've had a, quite a few sensitive projects come through in the past. Every single one is treated differently in that case. So I would say when you're submitting your project, um, email no one will be reading that until I will be you know checking everything out before that's sent to anyone anyway please email me with um, the name of your project your name the, the fact that it's sensitive obviously assessors will have to see it but if you need to kind of have things a bit more password protected or certain things much more protected then get in touch with me and we can sort out a way that we can make your materials more protected than you know um standard um the, like the standard way we do it and we'll make sure that that is um done more um securely um and then in terms of like the festivals and in terms of publishing sorry again that's something we would have a conversation about so if you're accepted to the festival we would ask you we've had before where we kind of say there is a you know 40th project but we're not we're not putting out um, information about this. So when we put, um, when we publish the information online, we'll just kind of say, there's a 40th project, um, you know, this is only open to uh, industry representatives in the market. We can also kind of say to the industry representatives that, hey, this is a sensitive project, this cannot go. Um, kind of like be more aware of this and people are aware of that and, you know, they've, they've worked with a lot of projects in their time where that's the case and, um, are very professional around that you know everyone's kind of used to that so we'll always make sure that nothing is being published without you knowing that that is being published we will let you know what is going to be same with our cat our um it's not a catalog but our um kind of publication of market projects that will only go to um industry representatives and people at the meat market however we will not publish information in that um if your project is sensitive so as long as we know that will not happen so just if your project is sensitive in any way let us know and we can we can organize that and also in terms of at the festival as well if there's something we could do at the market um you know if the name of the project can't be on the table that's absolutely fine we will sort that out so it's just it's a very much a case of project to project sensitivity some are much more sensitive and need to be you know a lot more um secure in some ways and some it might just be we can't have the log line around or maybe the filmmaker names can't be there so yeah get in touch and we can just just let us know and then we know it is and we can do anything we can then to to yeah thank you um here is a question around eligibility so is my film eligible if it has already been presented in another industry market at an earlier stage it is yes so if it's been to other markets um that are not doc fest that's absolutely fine um that won't go against you um we will just look at um, various things we've had a lot of projects that have been at various markets around the world globally as well obviously what our market offers is different to what another market offers so what you get from one is completely different to what you could get from another one um so it's not going to go against you at all um uh you know it's a it's kind of a good thing to see as well what kind of where you've been at and it's it's interesting so we do ask that question in the application um but it's mainly out of you know interest to see where you have been and kind of what connections you could have made at certain festivals but again you can make very uh the, there's festivals that do pitches so that might be the focus of that festival or you've been at a festival that has you know is based in a completely different region in the world and offers a very different um selection of industry um representatives to what we're going to offer so yeah it doesn't um at all go against you it's not ineligible you can apply having been to you know many other markets or no other markets it, it doesn't matter brilliant thank you um and i've got a question here about pitch decks so do you need to attach a pitch deck to your application and can the presentation deck be sent after the application deadline 
Uh, yes, yeah, so you don't need a pitch deck. Um, all of the additional materials are just if you would like to submit any additional materials. Uh, again, it's absolutely fine. If you do want to submit one, absolutely fine if you don't. Um, there's not a correlation between anyone getting picked or not picked over lack of or with a pitch deck. Um, it's just if you feel it supports your application further, obviously submit one if you'd like. Um, sorry, I feel there was a second part of that that I have now forgotten. Um, just whether you can uh, send these things oh. after the deadline. Yeah, so yeah, so um, you can, but again, just be aware that things are going straight, pretty much straight to assessors, um, you know, or in a very tight schedule. So um, if there are any changes, just send them as soon as, and I will, you know, make sure to update them and let the assessors know as soon as we have that. Brilliant. Um, I think you might have touched on these during the session, but we'll just reiterate again for anyone who might miss that. And um, there's a couple of questions about clips. So can you submit a trailer as well as a clip? And can the teasers um, go over the three minute mark slightly? Yeah, so if you want to submit more than one, um, let me know, uh, kind of email me and you can email me links. We do recommend kind of submitting one and again, um, kind of in our assessment uh, criteria, we would kind of, um, if everybody's submitting a similar length of clip, it's a bit more like fair in terms of application. But again, people could watch more. It just depends. But you can't, if you're submitting like two clips or three clips, you, you know, it's, um, I would really recommend submitting your, the clip you really want to submit out of those three. Um, but if you really want to attach some more, just let me know when we can do that. But we ask for one in the application. And I think, there's only really room to submit one in the application um, unless it's a rough cut and then it's slightly different um, on the form, but that's a different process. And then um, with the, sorry, remind me the second part again of the clip. Um, Just um, around the three minute mark and if they can go a little over the three minute mark. Yes, you can go a bit over, yeah. We're not super, super strict on that. So, you know, if it's a bit over, that's absolutely fine. If we're hitting five minutes, that's, you know, getting, it's quite far past, you know? So I really, really would try and keep it shorter. Um, but if you already have a clip that's a bit longer, of course, submit it. But again, it might only be the first three minutes or so that is uh, watched as part of the assessment. Or if you have a longer clip, actually, maybe you have a 10 minute clip and you say, uh, please watch between two and five minutes, that's quite good to know as well. So maybe you've got a longer clip, but let us know which bit you'd like to be viewed. And again, all of the assessment, uh, all of the assessors will see that information and make sure that they watch that section of the clip. Great, brilliant. Um, I have a question here about uh, the application process. Um, mm -hmm. Can you start filling in the form and return to it later and how? You can. Um, so it is odd because there's not like a save button. And I know that myself as well, I always like to be able to click a save and then, but it is a good, uh, the system does save it for you. So it's all good. Um, so when you start the application form, you will have to create a MyDocFest account or log into your current MyDocFest account. Uh, and then when you start the form, um, just make sure it kind of says at the top, I think it's a little like, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's a little saved icon. It will let you know that it's saving as it goes. So it does do it as you're filling it in. Um, and then you can come back to that by logging into your MyDocFest account and it's in the forms section. Um, if anyone can't find this, just, you know, send me an email and we can help you out, but you can, you can access it that way and you can come back to it and then keep filling it in. So yeah, you don't have to do it all in one go or keep it open. You can definitely shut it and come back to it. Um, but any questions on anything to do with the application form or any issues you might have with it, just let us know and we can help out with that. Great. Thank you, Sophie. Um, I've got a question here, which I believe you did answer, but let's go through it again, just around um, finance and budget in place. If um, if an applicant doesn't have those, what should they put in those boxes on the form? Um, if you've got, it's good to know what your kind of budget is. We need to know some kind of budget. Um, but if you don't have any funding in place, just put, you know, zero in that and just say you've got no funding in place. Just be, be honest. We just want, you know, clarity and honesty in that. Um, so, yeah, in terms of or if it's going to change, 
um, again, just kind of email and let us know or put it in a different part of your kind of application just to flag. Um, but we can definitely flag that um, to assessors. But yeah, I would say we, we need to know, you know, the budget at the estimated budget of some kind. Like we can't, um, if you have no idea of the budget, that is a little bit more difficult for us. Um, but if you have questions on that, again, um, let me know if there's a specific question about, um, you know, get in touch with us and we can we can help out with that. But um, yeah, I'd say that you need to have some kind of, uh, of awareness of what the budget could be. Um, and if that changes, then okay, but let us know. Great. Um, and the final question that's just come through the chat is, can a pitch deck be just a Word document or is it better if it's sophisticated and colourful? If you want to make it sophisticated and colourful, you can. Uh, however, that is not a necessity. <laughs> That's completely up to you and how you want to apply. Again, I think um, what is, uh, you know, what's good is that no one application is the same as the next application. So some people might do a really colourful and, you know, um, eccentric pitch deck. Someone else might just have a plain word document, but it's very clear about what they're doing. So as long as it's as long as the information in it is clear and we're getting the information that you want through about your project, that is fine. Um, we don't, you know, but if you want to make a very nice pitch deck, then that's completely, it's completely up to you, basically. If that's how you know you like to present things and that's how you want to present this project then that's that's really cool and that's absolutely fine but if you know if you want to just do a plain word document and you've said very clearly what you're doing that's also fine it won't affect the decision uh, in any way it's more it's the information itself as opposed to the way it's presented um, same with the way the application is written it's the information that's in there there's not a style of writing you need to do you know don't feel like there is um, that's the most important thing is just uh, that we're understanding your project um, through that as opposed to the way it is presented. Great, thank you. There is just one more that has come through the chat just around, um, should the full list of contributors be included with names, et cetera? Um, if, um, yeah, if you, I mean, if you've got, certain contributors you want to list then you can yeah there's a option where you can add team members um to that um if it means project contributors if you mean funding contributors because that is a whole other thing then we would like that we do ask for i can't remember what the, the section is called exactly um but kind of in the finance information you can say kind of who the you know how your funding is made up so far and uh, who the funding is from that's actually always really good to know I've just seen it come up, I meant interviewees. Um, in terms of interviewees, it's not necessarily, um, it, it's kind of good to, if they're a main part of your store, of your uh, film, then I think it's interesting to know, but you don't need the full, full list if it's like a really lot of people, like it's fine if we don't have the full list of that, if that's helpful. Brilliant, thank you, Sophie. Um, I'm just gonna add, some information into the chat. So I'm just going to add our industry at email address and also the link to um, our web page where you can find out um, about how to submit to the marketplace. Um, and just a reminder that, of course, we've been recording this session and a recording of the session will be made available to the participants afterwards. So you can refer to that. And I'll hand over to you, Sophie, to end the session. Um, well, thank you everyone for coming um, and thank you for submitting your questions and I hope it was helpful. And again, if anyone has questions, email me. If you're waiting on an email from me, I am getting back to you. Um, just bear with me. We've got a lot of queries right now um, and we're quite busy with that, but um, rest assured you will get a response. Uh, so uh, no worries on that. Um, but yeah, just send an email over, just be a bit patient. Um, and with that, so yeah, email at industry at chef.press.com uh, and I will get back to you as quick as possible. And just a reminder that our deadline is the 17th of February, so next Friday uh, at 4 p.m. UK time. And we also have our film uh, program entries are still open um, until the 3rd of March. So if you've got any finished films that you would like to submit, um, please do so to the to the films program. And also, actually, we have future producer school applications. If any 
emerging producers are out there uh, who are UK based. Um, that is open until Wednesday, the 15th of February. Um, so that scheme is back after we did that, that for quite a few years, but it's been on hiatus for a little bit. So also recommend that. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of everything from us, but it's, uh, I hope this was really helpful. And yeah, thank you everyone. And thank you, Eleni and Raul. Thank you, thank you all, and looking forward to welcome everybody on our 30th edition. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much.